This week, we're in the Outer Hebrides, where we travel back millennia to an age older than the pyramids, visit more spectacular beaches, and admire in awe the landscapes that belong to the ends of the earth. We also go in search of fairies and grizzly bears, with the help of a very special little girl, our brave niece, Summer. We're the newbies, a family of travellers with big dreams. I'm Tara, this is John, and this year we were joined by our little boy, Crusoe. 2020 sent the world for a loop, and it sent us on a journey. Not wanting to waste a single minute or second of it, we embraced van life and travelled to over 20 countries in Europe in our self-converted campervan. With the arrival of Crusoe into the world, our priorities remain the same. To make every moment matter, to take this little family around the world and to teach our children about huge horizons, a life full of opportunity and adventure around every corner. So we built a bigger van and we just couldn't wait to get it on the road. So before it was finished, we headed off to Scotland. Last week, we were in Skye, perhaps Scotland's most famous island where we made the most of the sunshine with some amazing hikes, crossing mountains, waterfalls and truly magnificent beaches. Please do remember to like and subscribe and leave us a comment. And don't forget to turn on notifications. We'd love to have you with us. Big day for little Crusoe. We are about to take him on his very first boat ride, this ferry across to Uist, where he's going to meet his granny. Are you excited, little man? I think he might just be a bit tired. Crusoe's first ever boat ride. Sleeping through the whole thing. Sleeping through the whole thing. He was awake when we boarded though. Was Had he? a little look around. Very good. Thought, that looks all right. I'll have a nap here. <laughs> good for him. When was the last time we were on a ferry? I want to say to you... Greece? Greece. Back from Greece to Italy. Yeah, it might have been mine. Not long now, just about to come into Loch Maddy. Now, if ever there was a name that sums up some kind of Outer Hebrides type place, Loch Maddy has to be. It's a very cool name. It is a very cool name. Look at this day. It's amazing. Like China Reggae. So far as John's mum's directions to her house, which was turn left off the ferry, keep going, get to a T junction, turn right, and look for the house next to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> that is the joy of living on the Outer Hebrides. And if you ever come to uh, US, you now know where my mum lives. After arriving on US, we headed straight for John's mum's house and then out onto a spectacular white sandy peninsula called Kyle's Pable Beach where our adventures in the Outer Hebrides began. The sun shone for us again, and it seemed like a perfect opportunity to go and search for the island's famous grizzly bear, and of course, some fairies. The only people we knew who could help us with that endeavor, thankfully live nearby, John's sister and our nieces. So this is Langash Woods on the Isle of Uist. It's a lovely community woodland which was planted to see if they could grow these non-native species for timber on the island and whether or not the climate was good enough for it. Now it's just a really lovely place to go for a walk. There's a fairy garden in here for those who might be keen on fairies, but there's also a statue to a chap called Hercules the Bear. 
more about Hercules very shortly. So the last time we saw a bear, I'm pretty sure it was in the middle of a forest. This is Summer, by the way, my sister's daughter. Your niece. My niece. Hello, Summer, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Very hello. good. The last time we saw a bear was in, in Finland. In Finland. Yeah, in Finland. And it was a real bear. It was a real big bear. And we saw a blonde bear too. Yes, we did. Do check the, the link right here. Yeah. Um, and go to our Best of Finland video. It's a very good one. Yeah, one of our One of our more favorites. We love Finland. We did. But there aren't just bears in Finland. There are also bears. In Langas Woods. There's a bear. Where? On the stair. Where? Over there. <laughs> Where's the bear? Over there. On the stair. Not this again. Let me go now. Yep, let's go. Before we find the bear, it's on to the serious business of finding fairies. <laughs> Let's go. So, the bear was a bear called Hercules. He was actually a grizzly bear, and he was owned by a man called Andy Robin. He was used a lot in advertising. So he came here to film an advert for Andrix back in the day before they used sweet little blonde Labrador puppy. Hercules decided he'd go for a swim in the sea and he broke off his tether and he escaped. Hercules was loose on the island for four weeks and everybody searched and searched and searched and searched and searched and they were really worried that he would be attacking livestock and causing a problem on the island. Anyway, they eventually found him and he had lost almost half his body weight because he didn't know how to hunt for himself or feed himself. But in that time he had been roaming the Isle of North Uist and was found very close to Langas Woods. Yeah, and is now a highlight to visit on the island. Yes, he is, absolutely. It's quite a legendary story. The story made news outlets around the world. There's the bear! <laughs> Very There's good. Here! On the stair! On the stair! Quite right, too. <laughs> so it turns out there is a bear. There is a bear. Kind of on a stair. Kind of on a stair, and very definitely over there <laughs> yeah this statue is in memory of hercules and hercules is actually buried here so i think this is such an enchanting wood for kids because there's the fairy houses and the story of hercules the bear and there is a little hut which we'll walk past on our way down which has got the full story of hercules yeah do check that out and that's really cool so we're off to climb some more trees yeah and then back to granny's house for tea and cake an early start for the newbies this morning. Poor little Crusoe got hauled out of bed for the first time in his life. <laughs> he doesn't ever get woken up. Normally we're trying to put him to sleep, yeah. but today, no. Nuh -uh. But it is a beautiful start to the day. We've just seen some deer. What are they? Deer? Deer, yeah, they were deer. With a Big stag, deers. beautiful. Yeah. Um, as we drive off of US towards the ferry, towards... Harris and then Lewis. See, he thinks it's two islands, but everyone's been telling me it's one island. It is one island, but it's two islands. Risa, anything to add to any of that? Doesn't look like it, does it? No. Just along for the ride, like Just normal. along for the ride, Dad. Just along for the ride. Yeah, Crusoe. Cool. <laughs> so this road is the, what, what did man call it? The Comity Road. This road is the Comity Road, and apparently Ooh. it was built when the locals were, um, uh, having a famine, something along those lines, the government gave them jobs so that they could earn some money and the job was build a road across the island of Uist and so they did. And, and it's on floats because it's in a peat bog. It's on what? Floats. Explain yeah. that. I don't know, that's what your mum said. It's on floats? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. We often find an early start rewards with wild encounters and wonderful golden colours. This morning was no exception and our drive to the ferry was beautiful. We'll be back in Uist, but COVID rules mean we can only visit John's mum. No overnight stays just yet. So on to Harris and Lewis.
just like one of those Norwegian ferries that we've been traveling on. Almost exactly the same. It's very familiar, isn't it? Yeah, very familiar. Cool. So I think we have our itinerary, darling. Very good. We're going to arrive at the ferry, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go, first of all, to Laskentire Beach, which is rated on TripAdvisor as one of the UK's top beaches. Radio. Then we're going to go all the way across Harris and get up to the standing stones of Callanace. Callanace? Yeah. Then we're going to go to the Black House Village. I can't say the first word. I don't know what it's called. We'll find out how to say it. Geerannan, Geerannan Black House Village, which is a village of nine houses in the old style. We can learn lots about the history. And then we'll go across to Stornoway and go to the museum, which we've heard is excellent. Right here? Right here. And the Tesco's. Okay, and the Tesco's, yeah, of course. You know what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking? We should actually include a map of, this, uh, of these islands on our video. Okay. Because, like, they are so far out there. Yeah, they really are. I mean, look how cool this is. That's where we are right now. Arrived in Harris, little man. How about that? Isn't that very exciting? What do you think of Harris, Crusoe? I'm gonna go and hang out on the beach. Should we get you some flip-flops? Oh, it's all very boring, isn't it? On arrival into Harris, we headed straight for the beach, watching the weather change with every single moment. I think in this short journey, we had rain, snow, hail clouds, and blue sky sunshine. It's quite remarkable. As you get closer to Luskentire Beach, you might notice some parking places with camping signs posted. These are terrific for campers, and the sign reads, Camping Spot. And it's great news for campers because all you need to do is text and it costs £5 to stay for the night. With views like these, it's an absolute bargain. We just had a slight full start. Popped out the van, <laughs> headed for the beach. It started raining and it's about two degrees. I actually think there's a bit of snow coming in that rain, you know. Is it? Oh, it's cold outside anyway, so we are going to have a hot chocolate instead. Crusoe looks delighted by the idea, a little bit confused too. Um, but hot chocolate first, and then the world's greatest beach. And then the world's greatest beach. <gasps> Poor little lad, bundled up, carried out into the howling gale. Ready to go. Ready to go, and then retreated back into the van. <laughs> You're such a good boy. There you go, my darling. Tara's complaining about my hot chocolate. Well, how's that for a stirring job? I stirred. Not very well. Did you enjoy your hot chocolate? Very much. Mm. Should we go and have a look at Windy Beach now? Could I have a spoon, please? <laughs> Should we go and have a look at a Windy Beach? Yes. Can I have a spoon, please? <laughs> We were at Luskentire just in time to watch the tide come in and it was super impressive with its speed as it rushed over the sand. Definitely worth being aware of before heading out on a long walk. That was awesome. What a beach that is, gosh. It goes on and on and on for miles and we would have kept walking but Jeep as it is cold. Yeah, my nose is starting to drip. Oh. Never a good sign. It's so. time to get back to the van um, and head on to the next place. Back in the van then. Ah, so nice and warm. Well, I say so nice and warm, but it's quite chilly. So unless spring decides to turn up in the next 48 hours, I think it's time to go look at some stone circles. Stone circles? Yeah. Is that next on the list? It's next on the list. Excellent. come to see the Callanish standing stones. We're kind of dodging the 
the weather. But we haven't done a very good dodge on this occasion. And it's starting to rain and it's so windy. The Callanish stones are placed in a cruciform pattern with a central stone circle and are believed to be some sort of prehistoric lunar observatory. Although, according to one legend, the stones are petrified giants who would not convert to Christianity. Reminds us of the Rollwright stones in the Cotswolds. Oh, it is cold and very windy up here. There's even ice. <laughs> There's even ice falling from the sky. It's time to go back down, I think. Get Crusoe back in the warm. Done, little man. You're such a good baby, Crusoe. Yeah, well done, you. Hey, we're so Come proud of you, my boy. Go. That's what Crusoe thinks of being taken for a walk in the hail. <laughs> Nice and warm now, isn't it? Hey, little man. We had a trap door in Cotty, which I could fit through until I got really, really pregnant. This one we can't fit through. However, somebody can. It is gnarly weather outside, Crusoe. You don't have to go into it. You can just go straight through the hatch. Up we go. Up we go. Come on, Come on then. Here we go. Through the hatch. <laughs> Where's that pizza? So this pizza place is so cool. It's called Crust. It's on the banks of this lock. It's in a container. They give you this little buzzer, which will buzz when our pizzas are ready. They've got drinks. It's got a vibe. There's music. The pizzas sound amazing. Nice. John's having a stingeroni and I'm having a smashing pumpkin. I got him. Special delivery. <laughs> Nothing like a pizza on the side of a lock, darling, isn't it? Oh, look. Even Crusoe's excited. Oh, it looks weird. That's a smashing pumpkin. Is it? Definitely yeah. looks like a pumpkin. What have we got here? Stingeroni. Stingeroni. That looks better. Yum. Yum. Mm. Well, the pizza was delicious and certainly hit the spot, but the rain remained relentless for several hours after. And so we decided to take a long drive to the northern part of the island to see a lighthouse, which the rain and dark clouds only made all the more dramatic. It was spectacular while we were there and the clouds started to shift, the sun pushed through and the blue sky once again lightened the day. weather is something that you just can't predict. We've been looking on our Apple weather app every day, every morning, and basically it's just a, a curtain of rain for the foreseeable future for forever, every single day. Um, it's simply not true. Uh, we've had sunshine and we've had snow, we've had hail and we've had wind and we've had rain. And we've had that in the space of 45 minutes on one day. <laughs> That's so true. So I think if you're looking at your weather apps, one thing that would be good to take into account is that most likely during some part of the day, you're gonna get some sunshine um, on the island. And it might last 45 minutes, it might last all day, but you'll probably get some blue sky. So we have arrived at a place where, well, I'm not quite sure what it is. There's some old buildings here, traditional old buildings and stuff like that. Tara's in the van. She's just giving Crusoe a bit of a feed. Come on then, let's go see this little village. Yeah, it's very cool, you know. They um they spent 10 years building this or really? renovating it. Oh. And it's renovated from uh from an olden village, old worldy village that used to be traditionally on the island. I'm guessing it was a fishing village because it's very close to the sea. Oh. Gear around in the Black House village. How cool is that? Look, brilliant. What's really cool about this village, or not cool actually, I don't know, but in it's 19... It's sad. It is a bit sad. In 1974, the residents of this village were moved Ooh. into council houses just up the road there, and these were left abandoned. But obviously these buildings have been here a really, really long time. Yeah. Um, it was an old village. Um, and, they, and then in 1991, they renovated it. Um, it took them 10 years, and in 2001 it was completed. And it looks totally cool. Very cool. Check this out. Thank you. 
The Geiranen Black House Village offers a real glimpse into the history and heritage of crofting life. What we discovered when we were there was that you can actually stay in one of the cottages with beautiful views over the Atlantic Ocean and a real chance to immerse yourself in the history of the island of Lewis. We're on our way back to get the ferry to Uist this evening, but we stopped off because the view is amazing. We've got all kinds of weather on the horizon. It's very, very cool. Crusoe, of course, has got the hiccups. Take a look at this. And so that was that. Three amazing islands and infinite amounts of weather. We spent our first night in the van on Lewis, and whilst it was a little chilly, we did well enough to be confident of spending more nights in the van. It was time to take the ferry back to Uist and onwards to the NC500 and more Scotland adventures. We enjoyed every moment of our trip to the Outer Hebrides and would like to thank the islanders for being so welcoming and the little explorers for showing us around. We will be back. That's the wrap for the Outer Hebrides. Tomorrow we're off back to the mainland where we're going to start off on the North Coast 500 route, which we're super excited about. Can't wait. If you are heading this way, you most likely will be going through Sky and Glencoe. We've got travel vlogs for them. We've included the links just below. Do have a look. Yeah, and please, before you go, remember to like, leave us a comment and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see you next Sunday. We'd love to have you with us.